I'm going to be creating property lines today using the import CAD function. But before I start, I'm going to duplicate my site view. The reason being that I can keep this one now, this, this original site, to have my section views and my elevation views and my import CAD. And I can leave it kind of messy, not have to worry about turning information on and off for the print. So if I right click and go duplicate view, um, duplicate with detailing takes in all of the notes and the dimensions and the line work. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to rename this site plan. And this new renamed one is going to be the one that appears on my print, uh, my sheets, my title sheets. And this one is going to be my messy one. So it doesn't matter which one I create my property lines in, they're going to still appear in both of these views. However, I'm going to import the CAD into the messy one, the site with um, long case lens. So I'm popping into insert, import CAD, and I'm going to navigate my way to where the DWG is filed. And for those of you following this, um, my video tutorial, sorry, not my video tutorial, my PDF is got a reference to where it's stored. So does the lesson plan. It's on Connect and it's in our East Drive. So I'm going to preserve the colours because it doesn't matter for this particular drawing. And I'm making sure that I check millimetres, even though this drawing is drawn in millimetres, it still needs to have it reminded. Check current view only. This way it'll only appear in this view here and not every other view that is generated. That'll include your perspectives and elevations. It's quite annoying. That's all I need to change. If I click open, it'll just take a little minute, have a little think. And I can't see it. Now the reason I can't see it is probably because the crop region is um, engaged and also because it's off to one side. So I'm just going to show the crop region. And in fact, for that matter, I'm going to tell it. So there was my show crop region. And this one here says don't crop the view. So just because I don't need to make this a printing drawing, I can see the whole thing. All right, now this has come into scale. You can see that our north is... So now all I need to do is move it into position. And I also need to rotate the property first. Now, the reason being that our brick veneer has already been created. So at the moment, you can see that our north, because all norths on the survey are pointing straight up the page. But this house is actually situated so that this points in this direction. So what we're going to do in this situation is rotate the property, not the house, which isn't necessarily the way we'd always work. But to rotate the house now that it's already created is just causing too many problems and there's nothing to be gained. So I'm going to click on this AutoCAD drawing. And can you see that a small pin appears? All right, that locks it into position. So I'm going to unpin it. I'm going to hit the rotate button or RO. And this is the base point of my rotation. If I move my cursor, I'm not clicking. If I move my cursor to the intersection of these two lines, which isn't quite right. If I zoom in, let's just double check that. So make sure you zoom in because there's some little vertices that it, it can inadvertently click on it. That way I can say, see this line? See how it's, it's highlighting when I click on it? See this line? And I just pull it down till I feel it kind of snap at a horizontal position. And I'm good to go. All right, the last two things I need to do is create some offsets. I'm going to use reference planes. So there it's in the architecture tab under work plane, reference plane or RP. I'm using reference planes because uh, they won't print and they'll be easy to see because they're bright red and dashed. So if I use pick lines in the offset command, I'm going to set this property back six meters and one and a half meters. Now that didn't show. And the reason is because it's been turned off. So I'm going to leave this bit in. I should have set that up differently, just in case you have the same problem. Can you see down here I've got reveal hidden elements? Okay, so what's happened is these 
reference plans, just hit escape a couple of times, have been hidden in the view. So I need to select it. If I unhide category, all reference planes come back up. And if I unhid elements, then it would just be that item that I'd selected. Unhide category and toggle to turn it back on again. Now I'm going to I'll just do that again so you can see what I'm doing. I went reference plane, pick lines, offset six. I'm doing that in the options bar here. Doesn't matter that I've only got a short part of the line, I can just drag that down and I'll do it again, 1500. These are our two fairly standard council setbacks. Okay, now last but not least, I'm going to select, holding down my control key, the CAD, the reference plane and the reference plane. So with all of those three selected, holding down my control key, I'm going to use my move. So I select first, select move or MV, and I'm going to click on the intersection point. I'm going to move it to the bottom left-hand corner of my property. Oops, and I didn't get that quite right. I'm just going to do it again while everything's still selected. From there to there, our outermost projection, which in this situation is the outside of the fascia, not the gutter. Now I can have a look at all of this information. I'll cover this a bit later, but what you will be doing is annotating and using a detailed line, creating services. So previously, and I don't think I've got them in this particular drawing, we've created line styles that represent the stormwater and the electricity and so on. You'll be picking on a pen. Let me just pick on anything. And if you use pick lines, you'll be able to click on the exact service points and just make sure that you've shown the location of all of the relevant services. Maybe not everything is relevant. Okay. And if you're not sure which one's which, you need to just come back and keep referring to the legend up the top here. You need to make sure you show your Telstra pit, um, not the inspection, or maybe the inspection over in the water meter, definitely. The electricity pole, we have an item available as a 3D. And then down here, we've got just one line remaining for the box curb. Pick lines. If I select that, you can see I can then drag my curb line up as well. It's important to show where the edge of the footpath is. So keep dragging that up. And then once you've got all of that information located, you're going to write the street name in and hide. Right click, hide and view your AutoCAD drawing and you'll be left with just the relevant information. So finally, let me just bring that back the proper way. Reveal hidden elements. Click on this item. Unhide elements. And I'm going to select massing and site property line. And I'm going to create by sketching. The distance and bearings won't work today because we've rotated it. So the bearings, the distances will be correct, but the bearings will be incorrect. I'm going to create by sketching. Making sure I'm clicking on the intersection of each corner. And if they meet, I'm allowed to make a property boundary. So now I will turn this off. Hide in view, elements, and that's what we're left with. The beauty of using the property boundary means that it's going to appear as the right information. It understands that it is a property boundary and it knows the area. So that's where you're going to get your information from the area of the site. And it will also appear in my site plan. So detail lines, if we've used some, wouldn't have appeared that way.